so we're gonna go over the top five resources for electric scooters. If you have other resources that you feel should be added to this list, this may become a piece of our website in the future, things like that. Um, and if, if, if you have resources that we're not covering, hit up, hit at electric scooter guide or just like chat somehow, like email or something. Let us know because like, we don't know every resources out there. Also the resources that I'm about to talk about, some of them are ours, like especially in the research area of this whole thing. But a lot of stuff is not ours, right? Because we don't have every resource for every use case out there, right? We don't do everything. <laughs> Obviously we mostly kind of do a lot more on the research side of things. Um, so anyway, definitely hit us up if you've got more resources, but this is gonna encompass research, repair, uh, writing, community, and resell. Th that, that's the five types of resources that we're gonna go to. And then also, I spent a bunch of time earlier today uh, basically trying to get all the links that I could into the video description. So that's your spoiler. But um, anyway, you can find links to the video description uh, for everything that we're about to talk about. Um, so as an overview, right, we're gonna go for research, we're gonna go over YouTube channels, real world stats versus manufacturer stats, where you can find that stuff, uh, where you can find the best in the price, best rated by writers. So the largest survey ever, we're gonna talk about that. We, the scooter database, of course, we'll quickly go into that. Then we're gonna talk about where to find the best places for you to get repaired on on your scooter if there's an issue. Then we're gonna go into writing, talk about where to find the best accessories, um, how to manage your scooter's battery life and where to find resources for that. Again, I'm not gonna tell you these things. This is not This is not me telling you, This is this is me telling you or hoping to tell you where the resources are for you to learn more about it, right? That's that's what this is all about. Um, we're gonna go over what I think are the top three apps for routing. Um, then we're gonna go over best resources for safety. Then we're gonna go into community, talk about um, how to find the best groups and group rides. And then finally, sale, sale, selling your scooter, right? When you need, when you wanna get another scooter and you wanna sell your old, then we're gonna go into that, all right. So first up is the research. So we did a little poll on the you on the Facebook group and basically, you know, reviews of the scooter as far as what's the most important thing when people are looking for electric scooter, you know, what people said is that they're really interested in reviews. So first thing we're going to go over are the best YouTube channels. So you know, from my perspective, I kind of have the top five of my my favorite uh, YouTube channels, and these are five of really the most popular also YouTube channels for electric scooters. So of course, you know, electric scooter guy, we have to put ourselves in there, of course. But then also Alien Rides has a ton of electric scooter reviews. He also has a lot of great riding shots. It, it, you know, always great music to them. Uh, and he's also probably one of the most experienced guys in this industry. Um, also check out Ben Fox's channel. Ben Fox over in the UK, he's he's like the guy for micro mobility over in the UK. Um, he's done a lot of electric scooter reviews, but also a lot on the side of legalization and things like that. Plus he, he probably is the, for me, I think he's the most entertaining guy. Um, you could just watch him talk. I don't know, he just has that ability to like, entertain people. Um, Electrics, Electric has a ton of videos. They have a really wide range of uh, micro mobility devices that they do cover. Um, they're, you know, they go everything from like electric cars to e-bikes and everything else, but they do have a ton of electric scooter videos. They're a little bit shorter and more kind of like, um, they're not as like deep dive as some of the other ones, but it's a really good way to kind of like check out quickly some different scooters uh, that you might be interested in. Uh, and then of course, right, we have uh, Adam, right, from Wrong Way, who, you know, he, again, he's over in, you know, I guess Central Europe in Poland, uh, but he, he he's obviously entertaining guy, um, extremely knowledgeable about the industry, and, and then covers a lot more than electric scooters. He covers, as you saw in the video earlier, he covers, um, you know, uh, he, he's really mostly into EUC, but um, he does a ton of electric scooters as, as well. So those are some great YouTube channels for you to check out. And I'm not gonna say this too many more times, but all the links are in the video description. So that way you don't have to, you know, be searching yourself for that kind of stuff. Um, next up, real world stats. So there's really only one place to find real world stats. That is actually the, um, 
you know the ESG performance page, right? So you go on the website, it says performance data, something like that. That's where you find every every number there is is numbers that we have um, gotten ourselves using our own data collection. It's not none of that is manufacturer stats, right? Manufacturer stats are very often wrong, but mostly wrong in the areas of range. In range, many times they are double what I'm getting, and I'm not a heavy guy. I'm like 160, 165 pounds. Um, I'm getting, you know, there's only been one scooter ever where I actually got the range that's advertised. And range is one of those most important things for electric scooters that you do have to know. If you have a certain amount of commute and you want to be able to run errands or whatever it is, right, you need to be able to have the amount of range that you, that, that I think that's advertised. Um, but the way that they test these things is not the way that is, you know, is, is a real world type example. So when we do it, we have a 1.8 mile loop in Berkeley. It's the same loop we use every time it includes uphills, downhills, it includes some good roads, but it includes some really bad roads too. Um, it includes, I think it's got mm, five or six, um, you know, stops. So every corner plus, um, you know, a couple stop signs, I think in the middle. So, you know, it just simulates more of a real world. So sometimes I can get going fast on like the downhill if there's no cars, but then other times, right. I, I, you know, I can't go that fast. So it's anyway, it's not just open run max speed, right? It's just, it's, it's what we thought would be the most, um, you know, beneficial for everybody to have. We also have on there top speed, top speed for most scooters, right? If the scooter goes over 45, we're not going to have the top speed on there because we only have about 800 feet to work with. Uh, but for 98% of the scooters on there, we got the real top speed. Um, for acceleration, if for every, you know, increment from 15 miles an hour up in terms of five mile per hour increments, we have listed the actual acceleration. So that way you can compare these scooters with one another um, in terms of how, how fast they are. Okay. Um, and again, when we do top speed acceleration, actually every test here, we test it in the fastest possible mode, just so you know. So every P setting, right, is tweaked to the max torque, max power, max output. We check tire pressure before we go out. Um, we check brakes, you know, for, 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 we do adjust some brakes before we go out. Other than that, you know, um, for the, uh, you know, for every setting it is max power. Um, of course we have the braking test and then we have a hill climb test. Hill climb test is a 10% average grade hill. 200 feet and it's a non-rolling start so we start from a dead stop and that's tough on some of the lower end scooters um okay so that's where you find real world stats go moving on to best in price if you just the again this is this is i think the best resource uh for if you just don't want to do any work and you just want to know what what we think is the best or the top three in a price range that is that we have articles on that um those are updated constantly um so if you just don't want to do any work at all i just want to say hey like i have five minutes to research this and i want to buy a 900 hundred dollar scooter just go on there and buy the one that we recommend that's fine um you're not going to go wrong it's just you know I, I, of course i will recommend you to do a little more research but if you don't have time you don't have time um best rated by riders this is an interesting one so what we did, um, we do this every year, we do a giant survey, right? And so both years, I believe it's the biggest survey two years in a row now. Uh, last year we got 754 owners, I believe, to rate their electric scooter. Um, again, biggest biggest in history. And we took all that and put it into one webpage where we rated um, every single scooter, you know, um, from what from what the owner said. And so the top scooters kind of like rose to the top. And so, you know, basically, you know, when, when we started this whole ESG thing, right, it was, there was like one or 200 scooters and nobody knew anything about them. There's no one place to put them. And since that time, about a year and nine months now, um, you know, the industry, while it's still getting more and more diverse, what's really nice is that I think you're finding, uh, people are getting more educated and they're saying, Hey, actually, you know, at, at this price, here are the top kind of like five or six to look at rather than, Hey, here are 50 scooters. And we don't even know that the weight is correct because half the time the, the dang websites have been wrong. And we, and we work with uh, retailers, manufacturers, all these people to get this right. Cause when we get the scooter and we weigh and it's like, Hey, this is not 31 pounds it's 39 pounds. It's a big difference. So 
the, you know, over the last couple of years, you know, I, I think the industry, you know, or, or like at least our website has taken what is this big chaotic mess of scooters from everywhere and really try to boil it down to like, who's a good place to go to, what are the best scooters, and then what are the stats to look for within that price range? Um, anyway, the survey, the survey can kind of, again, use all of these things and then just start seeing patterns, right? You'll say, oh, okay, hey, I'm looking at like the best scooters under, you know, around 2000, and you'll start seeing the same scooters come up over and over, right? In different reviews and different, you know, YouTube channels and different, you know, you look at a Reddit or you look at different Facebook groups, you'll start seeing similar scooters come come out and then, and then you get your search down to just a couple. So that's that's always good. Finally, for research, right, we have the scooter database, okay? This is the most powerful tool. It has every scooter that is worth mentioning on that database. Uh, you can narrow yourself, right? It has a ton of specs. We did just upgrade this, so now you, you, you can switch it from metric to imperial. So sorry to everybody that's outside of the US. For a while, we, I think we only had um, imperial, but now it is in metric along with everything else on the website should, when you're coming from a, you know, a, a, a non-imperial country, um, you know, like Europe, right? You'll be able to get um, metric stuff. And if it's wrong, just click sw switch the switch. So if you look at the next, here the next slide here you can see that um these are the three tabs right and then of course right if you go to the advanced from beginner beginner advanced right if you switch that you get i think what is like 18 different um items that you can sort and filter based on and if you look here at this at the, at the whole screen yep um you can see that you can actually type in different criteria that you want and so you take this list of i think it's close to 200 scooters now and you can really really quickly narrow this down exactly for what you know you need or whatever you're researching um okay so moving on from research right uh let's talk about repair so let's talk about repair resources um uh, you know and i i kind of just this is really just one sli one one slide here um and, and I kind of broke this down like your first option, second, third, and fourth options, right? The first option is go to your retailer, okay? Most scooters, I would say around, I mean, this is the this is what I hear and what seems to be true. It's around 5%, maybe slightly higher, of even the best scooters may have issues. It's a new industry. It is very important to buy from someone reputable. So if you bought from a retailer in your home country, go to them first uh it is important to do that right if you're gonna go on to like um yeah if you're gonna go try to search for stuff why spend the time searching for stuff when probably that retailer has dealt with whatever issue you're having multiple times and it's as quick as a phone call or an email wait a day give them 24 hours they're all small companies right now uh, except for maybe Segway and a couple others, but most of them are small companies, just a few people run these things, uh, but they are helping you. They're almost every single one is really dedicated to customer service, so you can get that. So um, yeah, and, and also again, you know, after the warranty period, most likely, you know, d again, don't make me responsible for this, but almost everybody I talk to still helps customers after their warranty period. If you're working on AliExpress or Alibaba and you're trying to save a couple hundred bucks, fingers crossed, you're, you know, you're not going to get help from them, uh, most likely. I don't. I mean, even if you try to get an extra part, it might take a few months to get. So it, it's not recommended to buy there unless you really, really cannot spend the extra 10, 20 percent or so, whatever it is, to go through a retailer. But um, but that's why these other options are for you. So the, ne the next option would be go to YouTube and look up videos on your specific problem on your specific scooter. It's pretty easy. Manufacturers make them, retailers make them, and the community makes them, okay? So that's a great place to go. For me, rather than getting like text instructions, right? Why I put second option is YouTube videos before third option being community group is just because the video seems to be, I don't know, it's just quick to search. A lot of times you can find what you're looking for right away. The next option, right, I think is to go to a community group or a forum, right? So that's where you're looking for your niche Facebook group. So if you have a, an eMove cruiser, okay, there is an eMove owners group on Facebook and those people will help you. And probably Voro Motors is probably like sneaking around and they're probably helping people. 
So that is really like, I think, I mean, you could swap second and third or whatever, but I, I, I would do it in this order. Um, you can also check out the subreddit, our electric scooters, right? It is a more uh, technical group than other Facebook groups. Um, so you can get help there. Also, you guys, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but there is a discord channel um, that was actually built off of the subreddit electric scooters where there's, um, there's a channel specifically for tech support. So you can go in there as well. If, if you can't find what you're looking for in YouTube, you didn't buy from a retailer, maybe a retailer's out of business, I don't know, but whatever, whatever, you know, you can, you can do that. And then finally, again, fourth option, this is probably not um, applicable to most people because there are not a lot of local repair centers. If you can find one, like kudos to you, you know, in some major cities, there are some, but they're all really new. You kind of you kind of just have to figure that one out for yourself, and that's why I have it as the last option. Uh, okay, moving on. Okay, so let's talk about writing. Okay, so in writing, we have this broken into five types of resources: resources for accessories, for battery life, for routing, and for safety. So for accessories, okay, there's I, I you know I've looked online for what are the top accessories. It, it is there's not a lot of comprehensive stuff out there. It's a lot of like anecdotal. Hey, this person on, you know, Facebook like this one, and this person like this one. You know, so so to be honest, there's not really a ton out there. All I can say is what are the types of accessories that you should have, and and to be honest. Um, when we made our top 10 accessories page, we actually spent many hours figuring out what actually are the top 10 that you should actually even look into. And so that is in there. And I also wanted to mention what the honorable mention, the, the, the types of accessories that were not in that top 10, just because like top 14 just doesn't sound as good, but I wanted to let you know that a thread locker like Loctite an Allen wrench set, which does come with most scooters, but if you don't have it, you should have it and you should keep it in your go bag, I think. Um, a heavy jacket and extra charger and, and, and a pump, maybe even a portable pump if you are prone to getting flats. Um, those are the ones besides the top 10. So we have a web page and a video that will go through our favorite you know, electric scooter accessories, but you know, you don't need to take our word for it. Just make sure that you get the helmet, you know, the lights if you're riding at night, right? The safety vest, things, things that are like pretty inexpensive that you know will definitely like save you. Basically, I'm just trying to say, get those things. Um, you can look at what we like, but you don't have to get what we uh, get. You get whatever you want. Just make sure you get something good. Um, okay, moving on. Battery life. Few things here under battery life. Number one, um, this chart is really helpful, right? I, I don't know if you guys know. I mean, you guys do know, of course you know, but right, your battery on, on your dis displays are pretty incorrect, right? Top speed's super incorrect, uh, which means that range is slightly incorrect. Uh, your battery life on the displays are very often quite incorrect. Like, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. The, be the, the scooter stays at 100% for like, a quarter or even a third of your ride, right? And then it goes down to like the last bar or the last 20%, and it'll just stay there for like, you know, you get like, you just keep going miles and miles. And miles. I mean, I do these range tests, so I see this all the time. So the other thing that you can do, rather than looking at the bars, which are just like, they're they, they're just so not accurate, is to look at the volts, right? Look, look at how many volts are left or what your voltage is at, right, on your scooter. And if you kind of like look at how many total volts you have in the scooter, how many volts it's showing on the display, then, you know, you look at the left side of the column and boom, it'll tell you uh, what percentage of battery you actually have left or at least a lot closer than what the display shows you, right? There's very few scooters that have a display that's like even close to accurate. It's just, I don't know why they, they don't, but it's, they don't. Okay, next up. Um, if you want to deep dive into battery life and how to like extend and get the most battery life and like extend your battery over X amount of charge cycles, try to get towards 500 or even a thousand charge cycles before your battery degrades and really try to like extend that lifespan. Check out the interview that we did with um, Core Shell's uh, founder, Jonathan Tan. He's super knowledgeable, answered tons of you guys' questions on the live show. What? 10 episodes ago, actually. Um, so, so I linked that, um, that, you know, in the link in the video description, actually, it'll actually go right to that time code where he starts just so you know, so make it, make it easy. 
um other battery life stuff really again you know uh we have one page on our website that's just devoted to how to get the best battery life that's what i would check out if i were you that is the best um that is actually written by our own in-house engineer um and so this is this is accurate data um okay and then next up uh for writing let's talk about routing so in the last i don't know maybe a couple months we've seen some new apps um come out or existing apps that have been like better made for scooter riders and so here's three of them right you have google maps with the bicycle route okay on the on the should be the left side of your screen right in the middle you have city mapper right city mapper with the bike directions and then you have scoot route which is some, is which is a new one that we just started testing out last week or the week before and I actually put in, if you look here, I put in the same um, place where, where I play pickleball, actually, at Bushrod. And, um, and so for me, you know, when I look, when I've kind of tested these things out, I would say my first choice is City Mapper. Even though Scoot Route says that it would take you 18 minutes, City Mapper has, you, has me go on, um, it, it's, it's like in Berkeley, right? You have these streets that are like, they say that they're for bikes. You know, it's like, it says, oh, this is the bike route but it's a regular street and it's not like a wide street. There's no bike lane. It's just, they just say it's for bikes. They just painted bike on the, on, on the street, which means nothing. It, do, it doesn't matter. And so, you know, like city mapper actually has some kind of like secret bike route residential areas with less stop signs. And that's why I really like that particular route, even though it says it's longer, um, it is, I think a little bit more protected, um, type of type of environment. And I like that route a lot more. Um, but I also like the Google route with biking is, is actually pretty good too. Okay. Uh, for safety, let's go into safety. The last category for writing, uh, we have three resources for safety. The first one is a post that is, that is actually one of the most outvoted posts ever for safety. Um, we, we pinned, uh, a, what happened here, right? Is on the subreddit a while back, we asked everybody for their story of how they crashed and everybody has a crash story, right? Um, and then what I did is I went and I went through every single story and I tried to make sense of it. I put it on spreadsheets and just the, the spreadsheet is a big, is, is just, is there's just a lot going on, but some patterns emerged, right? And so if you wanna check out uh, a lot of the causes for electric scooters, why people crash, check out this post. Um, next up, helmets. Helmets being the most important thing for electric scooter safety. You got to wear one, can't stress it enough. Um, everything that you wanna know about helmets and what, here's what a lot of people don't know, and I'll just tell you, but here, I, I mean, here's a resource, but since I have, you know, you're watching me right now, I'll just tell you, you, you have to think about high risk factor versus low risk factor. This is all on the page, but I just t tell you, high risk factor is like you're riding at night in new environments or you're going over 20 miles per hour, right? If you're going under 20 miles per hour, you ride in daylight, in good conditions, it's not wet, things like that, then you're low risk factor. But the easiest way is do you ride over 20 miles an hour or do you ride under 20? Because the deal is, is that helmets are rated, their impact testing, right, are rated at different speeds. And if you go over 20, do not wear a helmet that is not rated for over 20. That's the simplest way to do it. And if you go to this link, um, we have listed, I think, I think we got like every scooter that was, a, every helmet that was available on Amazon. Uh, and even a lot that were not, and we put them into a database so that you could actually look at the rating, at the style, a bunch of different things. Um, anyway, so just check that out. Make sure the helmet that you're wearing is d rated for, uh, you know, it has the right standard for what speed you're riding at, basically. And if you're looking for a helmet, it's a good place to go check it out. Uh, next up is basically, you know, somebody took a few of our articles and then a bunch of everybody else's article and made what is now the most longest but most comprehensive post ever for electric scooter safety. It's a crazy read. It'll take you like, between reading it and following through all the links, it'll take you a long time to get through that post, but it's like everything you ever wanted to know. So definitely check that out. Um, okay, let's move on to the community. So there are three types of community resources I wanna tell you about. Um, first, our general community groups. Second, our branded community groups. And, and, the, and I'll tell you the difference. And then third would be kind of like your group rides, okay? And so 
first of all, I just want to tell you real quick the differences between the general and a branded community group. A general community group is like the ESG Facebook group, right? It's like, you can have any scooter, right? We're, we're here for everybody. We're, we're not like, it's not for one brand. It's not for any one thing. It's just, you know, it's general interest type stuff. Uh, you know, show your photos and like, you know, group, group rides and things like that. Right. And you can get some specific information, but it's not really for that. Right. For branded community groups. So if you own a Dualtron or a Xiaomi or a eMove cruiser, there are definitely groups on Facebook and other places that are actually for you. And so what I recommend is you join our group because we're the best one. Uh, but also um, join the one that's specific to your scooter because that's where you're going to get the most, most insider information on your particular piece of technology. Um, so I'll just show you. So for general groups, right, you know, just for exchanging ideas, you post your photos, right, and that kind of thing. Other groups that you can check out besides our own would be the subreddit R Electric Scooters, right? That is 21, 22,000 subscribers at this point. Um, other group, other good groups on Facebook would be Electric Scooters Global, uh, Scooter Evolution, Electric Scooters USA. There's others, but those are some of the probably the best ones out there. And then, of course, that same Discord channel that I mentioned earlier. If you're into Discord and that kind of thing, boom, check out the uh, Discord channel. For branded groups, again, whatever is as easy. Whatever your scooter is, just type it in on like Facebook or sometimes even on Reddit. Um, and then, and, and you can find a particular kind of like an owner's club or owner's group. It is nice to, it's nice to be involved in those. Uh, and then for group rides, right? Group rides are an amazing way to, uh, like connect with other members of the community to, to meet other people that are going through the same things as you. We're all early adopters. We're all kind of in the same club. And so finding group ride is just a way for you to connect in person with other people and so we as far as i know right we we on the we, we've built the only database for group rides so we've listed i don't know 30 or 40 of them at this point new ones are coming in every day and then they're getting listed in this database so you can either submit so if you go to this page right you just go to the community page on the esg website you can search for them by city state right it's all sortable and all that good stuff because that's what we like to do but also if you know if, if you see one if, if, if you know of a group ride that we don't have listed submit it right and then and then we'll list it on there and if you want to start one let us know too okay um finally um, the last resource that I'll tell you about is kind of the end of your cycle and the beginning of the new cycle of having a new scooter and that's when you sell your scooter, right? And there's really not a ton of like great resources for selling the scooter. Craigslist has been the one that most people use, but some newer ones are coming up such as um, Electric Scooter Marketplace USA. Uh, it's still a small group right now, but that is a good place to sell. Also the individual owners group if you ask the moderators there, a lot of times they will let you um, post your scooter for sale on that. So, um, so definitely check that out.